Welcome to another edition of Talk Your Exposure. This is episode three, season two. And I say this all the time, but my, oh my, oh my. Devontae, we're here in season two, man. How you doing? And season two is getting off to a great start. Let's continue to flow. Let's continue most to flow. De most right, definitely, right. most definitely. We got a very special guest. Yeah, we got a very special guest with us today. Former NBA player, first ever NBA player on, on this show. NJCAA nominee or Hall of Fame nominee. Eddie Robinson, how you doing, man? How you guys doing? Thanks for having me, man. Hey, thanks for, for coming sure, out. For sure. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still all celebrating. Right. I'm still celebrating Brady. My bad. You good? Hey, <laughs> by all means necessary. By all means necessary, man. You got, you still got a good 48 hours to soak that all in. So you oh, know yeah. what you, <laughs> you got to do. Um, but you know, Eddie, we like to start off the show with some quick hitters, get the mind flowing a little bit. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions, and you got about six seconds to answer each. No oh, right or wrong at the end okay. of the day. All right. To start off with, you know, best <laughs> um, best NBA teammate? Uh, Baron Davis. Baron Davis. Okay. Okay. Best, worst city to play in? Utah. Utah. <laughs> I, I actually got – I'm going to switch it up here. I got to know why. I got to know why for this one. Because I mean, there's nothing to do. <laughs> nothing to do? Okay. There's no party. I mean, there's no party seat. I mean, we, we, I mean, we, my unit, we, we used to get out, right? So, I mean, we do, we, when we're at home, we don't turn up and do none of that because we, we do that, you know, we spend that family time when we're at home, right? Because, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, we don't, we ain't really used to party when we was in Charlotte or whatever, but, you know, we get on the road, you know, it, it's time to, you know, family, yeah. family good, family away, you know. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's time for to sure. get lit now. <laughs> okay, most well, definitely. And um, last question here. First NBA player in the NBA that gave you your first rude awakening, like, shit, I'm here now. I'm here. Kobe. Kobe. You can't go wrong with Kobe. Can't go wrong with Kobe, man. Kobe. Yeah. Shout out Kobe. Shout out Kobe. Before we get to Kobe, I want to ask you, Tom Brady, how you feeling, man? How you feeling about oh, it? Oh, uh, man, I, I mean, I, I, th I thought it was going to be – I didn't. I didn't realize Mahomes was hurt like that. Mm. Cause I was watching. Like I haven't been following it up until like you know what I'm saying until the game or whatever when they do the injuries and all that. So I didn't see that part. So mm. when they say who's injury, who's dealing with, you know what I'm saying. And I didn't see that, but I saw when he was in the pocket. Like no, nah, he not moving like he usually move, right? Mm -hmm. He got wheels, right? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, something, something ain't right. So mm -hmm. oh, like well, shit, it's gonna be. It, it may be a little bit easier than I thought. Now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Most he definitely. wounded, so he can't he can't play around in that pocket and make plays. So if we send pressure like we did, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we had a good outcome, right? I hear that. So so Brady's got seven. You know, he has five MVP champions or five MVPs. If he gets one more, is he is he better than Michael? Is he up there with Michael? Where where do you position him in terms of the the, the greatest all time and all, all I mean, sports? I, I mean, I don't think you can put him with. I don't think you can put him with MJ, right? I mean, just two different sports, right? You That's know what tough. I mean. I think it's just you know he the he the he the go for you know to go to uh football. Mm -hmm. right. You okay. know what I'm saying. Mike is Mike. Mike got so many accolades and, and and so many so much jewelry and, and so many trophies and, and he just he just got too many accolades, right? Well, like definitely. he he hasn't played since what? And, and, and people are still talking about him. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I was gonna ask you this one question because there's been a lot of a lot of talk with, with me with me and my friends and whatnot. Kobe, Michael, Jordan, one, two, three. Where you put them? I got MJ first, Kobe yeah. second. And my, I, that's why I like you. I like you. <laughs> so you got LeBron third. I don't got LeBron third. Oh, you, you low you low key said you said MJ, Michael, and Jordan. I said what? No, no, Steven, you low key said Michael Jordan twice. Oh, he sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm my my fault. No, no I, I said I'm MJ. A... I said MJ Kobe. Oh, you was fine. You were fine. Oh, my fault. My fault. <laughs> that, 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 that's me. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I messed up. So if you got Jordan, uh, LeBron, Kobe, where's one, two, three? My, and then my my third my third is Larry Bird. Oh, oh. <laughs> so you're not even putting you're, you're not even putting LeBron in the top three. Oh, no, LeBron ain't in my top three. Ooh. Is LeBron top five? Is LeBron top five? Who I got at the Larry? Magic? Yeah, probably probably Magic. Magic or uh, I'll probably do Magic. Yeah, Magic. 
That's ah. what I mean, I don't, I don't put I don't put Magic in my top five because I I mean I, I he's the reason I wore thirty two, right? So I don't even think I had to add him. But most people don't know that, right? If, if they see thirty two, but that's the reason I wore thirty two because of Magic, right? So mm -hmm. I don't even put him in there, but. But people, people, most people might not even know that though. But you know, I got yeah. I don't even put Magic in my top five because I wear thirty two because of him. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you, so you're saying that Mike that that Magic to you was the greatest? Oh yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Double, double three, Pete. Come on, man. Nobody do that. <laughs> you ain't lying. Very true. You ain't lying. You, know what I'm saying? you ain't lying. You ain't lying. I just do want to talk about just the just the culture, man, and just just the brand, the billion dollar brand. Yeah. You see Michael, 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 Michael on the jerseys now. Mm -hmm. Might <laughs> as well. You, you're right. Well, you might as well go chase him to the logo. You know? <laughs> That'll be yeah. the next one. Yeah, you shoot. If it's either going it's either going to be him or Kobe. I heard talk when Kobe passed away, it's going to be Kobe. But yeah, here we yeah, are. I, can so. see that. I mean, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe was my MJ anyway when I was playing. That was the closest thing to MJ mirror image. I'm talking about everything. Most definitely, most definitely. We, we don't get footwork, his footwork might have been better than Mike. Really? Shit. That's a hard take. That's a hard Kobe. take. Footwork? Really? Shh. Kobe footwork crazy. <laughs> Look what he did. <laughs> Look what he did with Taylor. I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. Like Mike, hey. Mike, 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 Mike ain't really play with you like that. Yeah. Bag, bag, fake, fake. What jump? Kobe, Kobe coming off the you know full court. I saw it. He, he was running the same, but he had that handle. He had yeah. that handle too. Well, definitely. Well, so so now now we're on the topic of Kobe. Let's just dive right into it. You know, twenty twenty obviously was a hell of a year. But one thing I definitely want to talk about is Kobe Bryant. You know, when he passed away, what were you feeling in that moment? Oh, that was man. That was that was the saddest shit in the world to me. Mm -hmm. Like one of them one of them sad moments. It felt like it felt like it felt like family died, man. To me. Because you know you you grew up idolizing that dude. I don't care if you don't like the Lakers, if you don't like Kobe, you idolize him because he was the next Michael. So you can't sit here and say Kobe had nothing to do with what you was doing. What you you know what I'm saying? Trying to get get to where you trying to get, mm -hmm. and just being and just being inspired by Kobe, man. Like his work ethic was just like Mike. They was in the gym, you know. They practice what they preach. I mean, that was that was devastating, man. And then not only that, his daughter was on there. That made it more sadder than, and then kind of find out it was other families on there. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, man, prayers to them, to those, uh, the, the other families that was on there as well, too, man. Like, that was, that was horrific. Like, that was, uh, I, I wouldn't expect it that. Neither would I. Then. It was crazy. I was, it was crazy how I found out about it. I, I was at the park with my daughter. She was playing, she was playing, so she was playing with, um, she was playing with this guy's son, and I can tell that it was his son because how he was paying the way he was paying attention to him as they were playing, right? Mm -hmm. And he was on the phone. And he was like, What? No, ain't no way. And and then just it's just crazy because when I was walking up to the park, he was kind of like staring at me, like, I, I know that's a ball player. Like he looked familiar. You know how you get that look, right? So <laughs> it's crazy. He came right to me. He was like, Man, guess what? Like he knew me, right? He was like, man, guess what? I was like, What? He was like, Kobe just died. I was like Kobe, Kobe who? You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> like Kobe who? He was like Kobe Bryant, and I was like, how? You know what I'm saying? I was like, how? He was like hey, in, in one of them in one of his private helicopters. When that he shit didn't even make that, sense I was to me. Like, yeah, so when he said that, I was like, well, shh, that could be true because that's how he moving around. Mm -hmm. And man, that's that was just that was just a total shocker, man. That was that was sad as shit, man. Most definitely. I mean, honestly, Kobe, man. R.I.P. Kobe, you know? and even 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 for me, when 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 I heard the news, you know, I was coaching a game at the time, and someone came to me in the middle middle of halftime or something like, "Oh, Kobe died." I'm like, "Shut up!" Like, like I, we said this in a recent podcast as well. If it, it felt like Kobe was immortal, the man wasn't supposed to die. You know, what I'm saying it felt like he never was gonna die. But to, you know, to see where he where he was and and in, in his career and just in, as a father and all that stuff too, and as a family man, you know, family is a, a, a big point to him. And and, and you know, being a, a a girl dad as well, you have a kind of a similar situation to you as well in the sense of you have f uh, five sisters growing up. You know what yeah. I mean? So so being a, being a, I guess you you're a, a girl brother. <laughs> so <Right>. so <laughs> in that in in that sense, you know, you and Kobe have a lot of similarities in the sense of you know, girl dad, girl brother, stuff like that. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. You know what I'm saying? So what 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 was fa family like to you? 
I mean, you got to remember, I, I went through that. I went through that with Bobby Fields when we was in Charlotte when he died in the car accident. Mm -hmm. Damn. You know what I mean? So that was that. That just brought all that shit back, like because I mean, you got so many people that you take care of, so many people love you, so many people that you're doing this for, you're doing that for. And man, to see that happen to anybody, I mean, that's just that's sad, man. So, I mean, yeah, man, that shit hurt. I was crying. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, cause that's that was that was sad. Like I I can't sit here and be like Kobe was my dog and we did this and we did that, but we had we had that mutual respect where we saw each other, we talked, we chop it up for a minute, boom, 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 and then you know we part ways that way. We had that mutual respect as he had with you know most of the guys in the NBA, other than the ones that he you know he played with, right? But we all we all got that mutual respect, that all love for each other, man. You know we. We come from the same, we come from the same dirt, you know what I'm saying? The same grind, the same, we we all done the same thing to get there, right? So mm -hmm. just having that, just knowing that we all went through that, man, we, you know, we show each other love, man. Just, I mean, we gonna battle, but at the end of the day, we, you know, it's, it's all love, you know? Man, that's, that's important, man, that's important. And even just in the sense of, you know, you going against Kobe, who's the idol to a lot of people in the world and changed the world in so many ways. Yeah. Like to be able to see, you know, even to hear like when you say, you know, you and him weren't really, you know, dogs or whatever, but like you still have that mutual respect for him. That that shows the NBA family in itself. But I definitely want to know about you and your family. Like how, what's family like to you in itself? Like with, with, with your sisters and your, your mom, your, you know, your family and your parents and stuff like that. Oh yeah, well, my parents, I lost my parents a couple of years ago, which I, which I thought like, that was the hardest shit ever. Like, nothing can compare to that, right? Losing your parents, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Me being here without them right now, like, it seems like the world is just quiet now. Like, it's it's, it's weird now. It's, it's weird. Like, can't call them, can't talk to them. It's just surreal. Like, I, I, I never thought I would be able to re experience that. Like, you, you, you don't grow up thinking about, you know, so many years down the line, this is going to happen. I mean, it's inevitable, right? We can't do shit about it. The father time, he on, he ain't waiting for nobody. So, I mean, you just enjoy it, man. I, and, you know, I conversate with him every day, talk to him and, and as much as I can, man, and, and, and be there for him. And that's all you pretty much can do, man. And just, 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 just make sure you put that time in with the family because you never know when it's your time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. what, what was your most memorable moment with your parents? I'm sure you have many of them, but if you, there's one you could pick out in particular, what's one that you can that you can look back on and say, yeah, that was that was a good day or a good time. Oh, uh, you know what? You know it was crazy because you know I grew up I grew up in Flint, Michigan. My parents were you know strung out on drugs and that whole that whole shit. So, you know that my my childhood with you know growing up then was pretty much short, cut short at ten years old. Mm -hmm. You know, and oh, I, moved, sure. I moved yeah, and I moved my granny. You know how I go when the household fucked up. You go stay big. You go stay with Big Mama. We'll stay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Big Mama, Big Mama got all. Of, she love you now. Big Mama love you, <laughs> <laughs> but she hate to see you coming. <laughs> right. Another priority. <laughs> you know I love you, but God damn it, another one I got to take in because your goddamn parents can't get it right. You know what I'm saying? So that was my and, and then. Her thing was, you know, she was kind of, she was a teacher. So I think that her nerves with kids, was, you know, kind of helped with us as well. You know what I mean? It's only so much she could do, you know what I'm saying? Trying to raise a whole a whole house full of kids, you know, that the parents can't take care of. So we go to grandmama house and, you know, we just made the best of it, man. And I just remember, I just remember when I made it, right? I, when I made it, because I always had my mama with me and my sister with me. You know what I'm saying? So they was in Charlotte with me. They was in Chicago with me. They was in Houston with me until until they, you know, passed away or whatever. I always had my parents with me. Not my not my father, but my mother. Mm -hmm. She was always, you know, with me 24-7 once I made it. Charlotte, Chicago. Then I moved to Houston. I'm in Canada now, but you know, she gone now. But shit, yeah, I had my I had her with me all the way. After though after all those years that I missed, shit, I was trying to make up for them. I hear that. I hear that. For sure. You know, let's let's transition to your basketball career. You know, in nine to five, you go to Trinity Community College in Texas. But before we get yeah. there, what was your recruitment like? Was D one ever I possible? I didn't play high school ball though. I dropped out in the ninth grade. <laughs> what? Is that right? <laughs> yes. I, so, I didn't I didn't play no high school. I dropped out in the ninth grade, man. Like I told you, my household situation, I didn't have that foundation. I didn't have no discipline. I had no parents telling me you should be doing this, you should be doing that. I, I didn't have none of that. I, I'm outside. 
You know, you know what I'm saying? So now I was a spoiled kid when my parents was together. They worked at the Buick plant in Flint. I had everything. I was spoiled. So, you know, just, just I grew up outside. So you know, in the neighborhood that, that my granny taught all the all the all the D boys that's outside running around in the neighborhood doing this, doing that. My granny taught them, you know what I'm saying? Taught them. So, you know, I, I'm right outside. They was in the same situation I was. No parents. They live with their granny. Block raised. That, that's crazy, man. Freshman year, you you're you just getting your feet wet. And so explain that process. Like, was D1 ever a possibility? Did you and your coaches, your teammates have a good relationship as you got there? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, when, when I got to Trinity, actually, how I ended up getting to Trinity Valley I, was a package deal with um, William Allen. Called okay. him, you know, my dog Pruitt. He was number two in the country at the time behind Rashard Griffin, USA mm. Today. You can look that up, Pruitt, Pruitt William Allen, right? So we was a he he ended up he ended up catching a dope case. He was he ended up catching a dope case, so he couldn't go D one. I dropped out. You know, we used to play at Glenn Rice Summer League at Jordan College, right? So a lot of a lot of college coaches used to come up there, and you know, obviously try to look at players or whatever, whatever. So it was a situation where Ralph Alaska, this was the coach he used to coach at Mock College, which is a local community college in Flint. Mm -hmm. So he ended up getting a job at Trinity Valley. And, you know, he came in that gym. He came in that gym and he was coming to look at Pruitt. But, you know, I was playing on that team, too. But he didn't know who I was. He didn't know my story. He didn't He didn't know anything. Like, most, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't in school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So after the game. But after the game, he was trying to get us out the, out the Trinity Valley, right? He was like, man, I need to get you guys a package deal. I think he had 40. I probably had 40 just in the summer league, right? Just, just playing, right? And. Man, that led to us going to actually because he had he couldn't go D one, he had to go D two. So we went as a package deal. Okay, okay. So we went to Trinity Valley. I had to get my obviously I had to go down there early. I, I went like two months early because I had to get my GED. I had to get that taken care of before I could step foot on campus, scholarship, anything. I had to have that right. So went down there, took care of that. You know, what I'm saying boom, and then yeah. we done a year down there. We made it to Hutch. We made it to Hutch for the I think the the final final eight I think it was. Damn, we ended up losing down there. I I, I do got to ask one one question though. So so you were able to condense four years of high school in two months? Yeah, that's man. what it sounds like. I'm smart. I just didn't like school. No, nah, I'm not taking that away from you, but I know hey. me personally. I hate, I hate school. Hey. It's a bootleg. It's a, it's, it's, a bootleg it's a bootleg ACT. It's the same shit though, right? <laughs> you're right. You're right. You right, as long as you get that and shit. It don't it put matter. you in the room. And look, and look, and, and, and this is how it goes. And I'm going to be 100, and I'm going to be 1,000 all the way. They don't, they don't give a fuck if you get help or not. They would, Look, you got from eight to five to complete this test. I'm leaving the classroom. That's <laughs> when you're done. Oh, it's like that? Oh, okay. Hey, what you need? Hey, I, hey, come here, come here. What you got for, let me see what you put for that one. <laughs> hey. I'm a great cheater. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, efficiency is key. Exactly. We'll I that. had to get it done, right? Like, you got to get it done. Got to get it so, done, right? So done. you're a Hall of Fame inductee. So for all the viewers, we know you had a great season there. What was your first game like? Did you have any hype around you? Did anybody well, know you before that game? No, nobody. No, I mean, at Trinity, and then here's the crazy thing. At Trinity, at Trinity Valley, our... We were, I think we were the, we were the number one seed returning that year. Obviously me and my cousin, we were freshmen, right? So we, we go there, they, I mean, they were like, they were coming back number one in the conference. So it was, it was lit down there. It was a lot of kids from New York down there. Uh, Tyrone Foster, Thalionis McGee, Brian Lewis. I think I, all them guys went D1. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we had a we had a nice squad down there. So it was a lot of it was a lot of noise down there. And um crazy story before before I even get to college, I I play AU ball just using using other people's name when they didn't show up for uh for the games. Like I was <laughs> I was Mateen Cleese before, I was I was Mo Pete, I was Charlie Bell, I was you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just to get the look. Hey, yeah, so, efficiency yeah. is key. <laughs> yeah, just out there in the Anthony Hardaway jersey. Jeez, Columbus, Ohio, killing. 
More people, I'm talking about getting D1 letters in my name to my high school that I supposed to have been at. <laughs> my, because, because the assistant coach, he pulled me in the office. He said, man, you, he said, I done figured out what's going on. You down there playing in Ohio. I'm like, what playing in what? How you know that? He showed me all these letters with my name on it. Mm. Every, I'm talking about Florida State, Florida, all the high, all, all D1 schools. Damn. Okay, okay. So when they run up, so when they pull up to me, so they, when they see me and they see me in Trinity Valley, they like, man, wait a minute. Right. Exactly. No. I got you down. I got you down. I, I scouted you in such and such place. Your name was this. I scouted you somewhere. Your name was this. <laughs> never this. You don't know who yeah. Eddie Robinson is. I never used my, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's I was so always nice. somebody else, right? But the mail came to my school in my name because Jeez. they figured it was, they figured it was, they sent the mail to, because it like, you might get like Morris Peterson. He went to Northwestern, but I'd I be getting Morris Peterson mail. His college, his college letters would be coming to my school. Or Charlie Bell, who went to Southwestern Academy, his mail would be coming to Flint Northern, where I went to school. Whoever I was that weekend, their mail was coming to my school because I used their name. That's how my head with coach it. figured it out, right? Most you just definitely. rolled with it, huh? Yeah. That was, and that was just my AU coach, Raymond Jones, man, just trying to just trying to get me out the streets, get me, and he's pretty much the one for, he's pretty much the one that, that God sent me and said, look, I need you to show this young man, if he do this, this, and this, and focus on this, this, and this, he can accomplish this, this, and this, and, mm. and, and that's what happened. And that's, and that's, and in my opinion, that's what makes a great coach, man. There's so many coaches out there that need to, that need to start doing more of that instead of just trying to get their name out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's like, why, that's why I got into coaching shit. I, I, I want to see the, I want to see the kids get rich and famous and go travel the world and be, and make, and facts. make millions of dollars. Like, I want to see the next kid do that. Facts. Because somebody did it for me who didn't have to do that. Like, he didn't have to do that. Right. Most definitely. And, and we're definitely going to get into your coaching career in a bit, but I want to, I want to touch up on, uh, you went, afterwards, you went to, um, Central Oklahoma. Uh, you, you said earlier you have every you had a lot of Division One schools and whatnot. But after after your your JUCO career, could you not have gone to Division One, or was that one of those you had to take a couple years at JUCO first? No, what happened was what happened was in '97, I put my name in the draft because the Spurs were supposed to draft me second round. Mm. RC Buford, RC Buford, and my coach had a great relationship where they was always talking. They was like, "If you get if you get him to put his name in the draft, we will get him second round." Like this is why I put my name in there. I only need one team. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and, and and come, I'm coming from. I'm trying. I'm not trying to go back to Flint, right? So I'm I'm trying to get in the league ASAP. Right. All I need is one team. Like you know what I'm saying. I didn't know who. <laughs> I didn't know who was attending my game. My coach never told me, but he was like, "Well, fuck, I got to tell you, this mm -hmm. fucking this fucking RC Buford, the general manager for the Spurs, he fucking loves you, man. He, he still take you second round. I'm like, what? Oh, I'm gone. <laughs> Mama, I'm gone. <laughs> 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 I do the same thing. You know what I mean? Shit, I put I'm like what? And then my and then my same AAU coach who, who those the guys who I was just telling you, Raymond Jones. He was like, man, you ain't ready for no NBA shit. You you just not learning how to play college basketball. You ain't play high school ball. You know you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, look, I got one team talking about they go. Woo, 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 woo. He was like, nah, nah, nah. So what happened was I end up I end up taking his advice. Right? I mean, shit, he he ain't been wrong this far. <laughs> Fair enough. I took his advice and I tried to declare my name out the draft. David Stern said he didn't get the letter, blase, blase. I went, I went undrafted. I was an unrestricted street, uh, unrestricted, unrestricted free agent after my college career. As soon as I played my last basketball college game, I was a free agent. I was an NBA free agent. Mm -hmm. Like soon as, like right at like I think I, a week after my last game, shit, I was doing NBA workouts. Damn. And I was supposed to sign with the Knicks. Oh, now imagine this shit going from college. I'm trying to make <laughs> history, man. Listen, I was supposed to go from D2, last game, to the playoffs, to the NBA playoffs. Mm -hmm. They were playing Miami that year. Mm -hmm. And the reason, and the reason, and the reason they didn't, the reason this shit didn't happen because, you know, later on, and as I learned later on down in, down the line in the league about the whole veteran, the rival, the brotherhood of the veterans, they try to keep you on because they know them young boys knocking at that door. You know, I was knocking at that door. I was like, shit, we had to give up. David Wingate was supposed to be the guy that had to, they would have had to get rid of to, to put me on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. So that's why I had. So since I became a restricted free agent and I didn't get drafted after my sophomore year, I couldn't go D one. I had to go D two. 
So, so let I definitely want to get back, get to your NBA career in a second, but I want to know after you know the, the you had you had an, an interesting experience from high school to college and university and whatnot. In your final game, was there ever a moment that you said to yourself, "Fuck, this is my last university college game"? And was it one of those where you were excited about it, or one of one of those where you were sad about it? I was sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie because man, just just just. Just the way I grew up, man, I was just starting to feel normal. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't have to wake up doing what I was, what I've been doing my whole fucking life since 10 years old. Yeah. Now I'm just waking up, going to class. I'm, I'm doing what you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm living normal. So that four years fucking flew by. You know what I mean? And I was like, damn, like I was enjoying it. I love college. I met so many people. I had so much fucking fun. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. man, that four years went quick. And you know, just from just from my upbringing, you know, I, I, that's that's the only part that made it sad, just because of the way I grew up. Most so definitely. you know that street life, and then just being able to just not worry about nothing, and just be at school and just hooping and studying and, and doing all that shit. I was in class every day. <laughs> ain't Damn, so, so, me, so, ain't so, nothing so. to get me sent back home. I was about to say, so, so, so coming from someone that didn't want, didn't want to do high school work, you went and finished off in university. That's crazy. You got a, you got a degree. Yeah, I mean, in I mean, it would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. I, I don't want to say I, I didn't want to do the work in high school. It was just, it was just the, the, my foundation, just the way I grew up. I of had course. no guidance. Of I course. had no parents, so I was like, for well, shit. You know, I, I read. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to school. I'm like, shit. I, don't, I really don't even want to be here. I ain't doing nothing but being there clowning. I could mm -hmm. be doing this and doing that, and so it got to a point where. I, you know, high school and school was just, was just, I just forgot about it. It was just, in, just outside every day. Just, you know what I mean? We have, we have, we have a lot of kids that listen to our podcast and both between Devante and myself, uh, we coach, we coach a basketball program down in, in uh, Vaughan, Ontario called RWI basketball. And that's how mm -hmm. actually how I got connected with you from the CNIT tournament. Yeah. Um, I came down for that. Yeah. 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 So one thing we always hear from our kids in particular is we got to go D1. We got to go D1. We got to go D1. But your your story is so unique because you went JUCO and then you went Division two and then you went to the league. Talk to us about – talk to our kids and in, 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 that's important. I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear your answer. But talk to the kids that listen to this podcast about how important it is to not just think that D1's it. Actually, De De remember Devin George? Yes. He went D3. There you go. So I think people in D3. Yeah, he went D3. <laughs> <laughs> like, so so what I would say to the kids is, listen, man, and, and, and they don't know about scouting, right? They don't understand scouting and they don't, they don't, they don't understand that any buzz you create, somebody's going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. They're going to hear about it. I was in Salina, Kansas. No, I was in <laughs> Athens, Texas. Okay. Okay. Athens, Texas. That's middle what of Trinity nowhere. Valley is middle of nowhere, <laughs> right? Trinity Valley, <laughs> Athens, Texas. Want to get one twenty-five out there? Yep. Feel me? So, and then I went to Salina, Kansas, middle of nowhere again. Brown Mackey. <laughs> this is a business school. That ain't even. It ain't even a school like that. They just got a team. It's, they don't have a campus. It's a business school. Mm -hmm. that, that, that some smart motherfucker put together and made a basketball team. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. So, you know, I went JUCO, and then I went Division Two for two years. When you, when you create a buzz, they're going to find you because they came and found me. Think, think about this, kids. I, I, I didn't play no high school ball. Nobody knew about me. I wasn't ranked. I wasn't recruited by this, recruited by that. You know what I'm saying? I was a dropout. Mm-hmm. Hop back on the right course, got my shit together. Didn't matter. It didn't matter what school, like, like on my journey, I looked at it as I don't give a fuck what school it is and where it's at. Mm -hmm. If I get the opportunity, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Anything is going to be better than where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. I can promise you that. Any school, I don't give a fuck where it's at, it's going to be better <laughs> than Flint, Michigan, the streets of Flint, Michigan. Yeah. It's going to be safe. It's going to be other kids and it ain't going to be like this shit, right? So, I didn't know shit about the school. I didn't know nothing. Didn't want to know nothing. When when is when am I supposed to be there? Mm -hmm. Sign That's me it. up. That's Sign, it. Me, Sign up. me up. <laughs> it don't matter. You you should you gotta be thankful and grateful and be fucking proud that any school wants your black ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This ain't no. This ain't no. This ain't no. This ain't no fucking man. It don't matter what school you go to. 
You put up numbers, you put in work, they gonna find your ass. They yep. found me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's how the recruiting world works. They everywhere. Oh, we got a buzz that somebody did this, somebody did that. The teams are sending somebody down there and they come in to see you. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, the, and, we, oh, yeah, and, we might need to boom, 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 boom. I created a buzz. I'm killing. I'm not and, trying to go back to Flint. I'm killing. The crazy thing about that one, too, is that especially in Canada, you know, and now you're here in Canada, you 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 hear everything, all these kids, I got to go to the States. I want to go to the States. I want to go to the States. Yeah. In my opinion, fuck all that. You don't need to go to the States to get, like, like you're saying, you don't need to go to the States to get recruited. If you're nice, you're nice. Yeah. You you, you agree with that one, too? I, I mean, I think I think they look at it, I think they look at, look at it that way to be on a more of an even playing field, right? To be mm-hmm. to be recruited, to be seen, right? So they think they, I mean, coming from Canada, right? That's a that's kind of a different perspective of what I what I'm talking about, right? So here here is more of needing exposure. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I think I think that's two different things. So I think in their mindset, because you know what I'm saying, I've, I've heard the parents and I've been around long enough to know, like they think they they the only reason they're going to make it is because if they're in the states. They 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 can be seen, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I mean I, I mean I don't I don't know. I mean my thing is I'm in a position where I have those contacts with those schools, and just because of my NBA guys that I play with, who are with, went back to their old schools and now coaching, mm-hmm. you know, Jawan Howard at Michigan, Jason Terry at Arizona, uh, mm-hmm. Damon Stoudemire coaching. These are guys that I that I know like that, you know what I mean. So. I think we have to get to a point where you gotta you you gotta put up these you gotta put up the numbers. Yeah. You got you gotta you gotta give you got you know what I'm saying. You gotta you gotta do something that you gotta do something that's gonna make put somebody in awe mm-hmm. because that's how they are. You know what I'm saying. They they really they really not. They just look at you and see and see if you do if you do one thing great, they're on you. Most definitely. For Most sure. definitely. So now, so now I, I, I want to transition to your NBA career. I want to transition to 1999. You know, you finish off, off college. Uh, you go as an undrafted free agent, like you mentioned a little bit ago. Yeah. Um, was there ever a point in time that when you went undrafted, you were like, man, I'm done playing basketball? Or was it one of those who were like, no, 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 I'm going to get here still? No, oh, because it was the way it transpired. It was because it was because I put my name in the draft. Mm-hmm. I didn't sign an agent. That's how I was able to go back to school because I had no intentions of being in the draft. So that I didn't have an agent. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why that didn't ring a bell with David Stern. Like, why would I put my name in the draft and I don't have an agent? Like, come on, that like agent player goes hand in hand. If I don't have an agent, why would I be getting in the draft? You know what I mean? Like, they just made up. He just made up so, that's like all type of shit, right? Like, mm-hmm. and then come to find out, they do the FBI background check on you and they know where you come from and they they yeah mm-hmm. yeah they do all that. David Stern, I don't know what Adam Silver doing, but David Stern, he do that. He told me that. Mm-hmm. So, so, <laughs> so b- b- before before going to Charlotte, before going to Charlotte, were you drafted? You weren't drafted. Were no, I was a free. Remember, I told you I was a free agent. Soon, right, as soon as my last college game was over with, I was a, I was a, I was an NBA restricted free agent because so, I had because I went undrafted in '97. He never, awesome. he never took my name out of the draft. He said he never got my letter. So therefore, oh. I was, I went undrafted. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I see how that works. I see how that works. Okay, so nine, so ninety nine, you get you get picked up by by the Hornets. You had a yeah. lot of a lot of good teammates on that team. There was Brad Miller on that team. Jamal McGlure yeah, was on Coleman. that team. Yeah, yeah. Bear, Derek Coleman, no. Baron Davis, Eddie, Jones. Eddie yeah. Jones. You had a lot of Eddie good. Wesley, a lot, yeah, yeah. You had a lot of good mentors and the veterans on that Eddie. team. Yeah. So who, yeah, who? My, my my veterans was Anthony Mason. Oh shit. Eric Coleman, Eddie Jones, and uh, Eldon Campbell. Damn. Don't know, because it was only it was only we only had what it was me me and Baron was the only rookies. Mm-hmm. And Jamal Jamal was on that team too, if I'm not mistaken. McGlure, right? yeah, man, McGlore, but you know they tried to they, they spaced them. I forgot who McGlore had, but yeah, those are my rookies. Th- those are my veterans, right? Damn. <laughs> those, 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 are, those are some real rookies right there. <laughs> yeah, so, what? You know, Eddie Jones is my dude like that, right? So True. yeah. yeah. Eddie Jones could ball too, and that, that's one person yes, that I feel can. like never got his yes, credit. I feel like Eddie yeah. Jones never got yeah. his credit. You, but listen, I learned I learned all that shit from Eddie Jones, Bobby Fields, David Wesley. You know, the game was physical when I played. It ain't this touch defense shit you see now. <laughs> Anybody can play in this fucking league right now. Shit, shit. You can't touch him off. Like, come on, man. Like, come on, like 
That's why. That's why. I'm under, that's why. That's why LeBron ain't in my top five. You ain't, you got to be from this cutthroat era. My oh, era yeah. cutthroat. That's why you ain't in there. I you love it. Me? My, I love my it. era was cutthroat. <laughs> you, talking about, you talking about hard? It's hard to score. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Most definitely. Look at Iverson. Every time. How many times did, oh, Iverson ended up on the floor every night? Come on, man. This shit was rough when I was playing. This what this shit watered down now. And we're, we're definitely time gonna management. Out. Time management. Motherfucker, we hate it coming out the game. Are you crazy? Hey, yo. Hey, I feel that was a shot to Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors, but hey, that's, that's, another shot to, that's a shot to every nigga who out here on time management. I, I don't give a fuck who you is. You you on some whole shit. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that time management. Man, what? All these fucking celebrities and stars in the crowd, you want to sit down? No, nigga. <laughs> that's, a, that's an inspiration right there, man. Man, I love it. Like, when you put it that way, there's the movie stars and shit and rappers and shit at the game. Come on, man. Nobody trying to come out the game. Yeah, I we love it. trying to hoop. Love it. Love it. Love <laughs> it. Said, this, these dudes, they cut from that cloth where I come from. <laughs> obviously, obviously for, for time management. You you got two hours. You practice two hours a day. You ain't doing shit else. Mm-hmm. Even, even, playing, for, for 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 Devontae and myself in particular, we never we never made the NBA, so we don't we, we don't know what it's like to be in 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 that particular game. Two, you practicing from ten to twelve every day. That's it. You done that's it. it, man. Yeah. That's it. The rest of the time you got to yourself. You got, the rest Sunday. of the time you got to yourself. So time management from what? You ain't doing nothing. You're <laughs> practicing and going home. That's it. What 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 You're would going a typical, to another job? <laughs> You're right. You're right. So what 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 would a typical day like be? A, a typical day be for you guys? You know, after practice, what what happens after that for you guys? You guys go chill and whatever case it is. It was like, no, nah, no, nah, let's go get more. Depends on where we at. We, we we at home or we on the road. You tell me. Your your if we, your story. If we at home, we going home. <laughs> <laughs> Which if you on the road, if we on the road, it's a party. Oh, it's a party. As soon as, soon as we touch. <laughs> Soon as we get off them fucking buses in front of that hotel, we I'm gonna see my hotel room to the the next morning. We lit all Damn. night. Damn. Six a.m. I might be in. If we in New York, she you know shit ain't shutting down at six a.m. Five a.m. in New York. We ain't so getting out you, till one two in the morning. <laughs> so if you had to give top three locations, would you say Knicks, Lakers, Clippers, or what? What, what would you say? Top three locations to party at. Yeah. Yeah, safe to say. Yeah, Atlanta. This Atlanta. Hold on, hold on. Atlanta. I got to put Atlanta in there. With one, this one, one twelve was popping. Seven a.m. Oh, oh we got like <laughs> peaches and cream. Peaches okay. and cream. Come on, man. You remember when? You remember when the ATL was litty like that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was playing when it was lit. Peach Street. That must, oh, come on. That must have been a great time. Okay. Gentlemen's <laughs> Club. All that. Oh. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That most definitely is that's fair to say. Papa, that's what we had. Really, that's what we had. Thugs in the league. Oh, <laughs> let's go. Let, thugs let, in the league, now, man. Let, let's get back on track a little bit to your, to your career with Charlotte. <laughs> I want. I want to. I want to know what was your. You know, I'm in the moment. The NBA moment, like for you. What was your, I know earlier we talked about Kobe, but was there another one? Was there another? I'm. Yeah, I'm in the NBA moment. Man, I think. I think. I think at that point. It's, it's when you start, you, you know, you, you start, you start having flat. Like I remember just sitting in, in shoot around. Just I think we was going to play. I think we was playing T Mac. I think we was playing Orlando. Grand Hill was Grand Hill on that team then. Yeah, he's, no, he, he, no he, Grand Hill was with the Pistons then. He, he was with the Pistons. They signed yeah, the same just, time though, no? Huh? They signed the same time, T Mac and, and and Grand Hill, no? I know they was in. I know. T, I'm trying. I think. I think Grant Hill. I, I think my first time playing Grant Hill. I think he was with Detroit. Okay. Yeah, he was with the Pistons. But just, just you know, just actually like, just actually like, just just seeing all the players you've seen growing up watching on TV. Mm-hmm. You know, just actually seeing them guys, man. That shit was that. Like that shit was crazy. Like Magic, Pip, and Jordan, like. Bird, like I met all these, all these legends, man, like crazy. And then, and then playing in the big three, I met the Ice Man, <laughs> George Gervin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like that was crazy. Like all, meeting, meeting those uh, Hall of Famer coaches, man. It was just, you know, just, just paying homage, man, and just, just being like, wow, like I actually played at the highest level in the fucking world. Like this is the league. Like you know, like. 
Ain't nobody can take that moment away from you. No, you can't. <laughs> what what can't. what were what what were some advices? What was some advice that your vets gave you? Like you know, you, like, like I said earlier, we you had Eddie House as a vet. You know, some other guys that you, that you had as well. What was some advice that they gave you? No, nah, man, not man, none really. You know, it's a it's a live and learn. So you know what I mean? You you, you know what it is to lead. I can't. Yeah. You, hey, there's nothing else. You got to be on your shit. Yeah, fair enough. Twenty four seven on the court, off the court. You know what I mean? You got to put your work in. As long as you're doing that, you good. Put your work in. Pay attention to detail. Know the plays and shit because in the East we got over a hundred plays. You know what I mean? So you got to learn the plays and all that. But man, other than that, man, shit, just I mean, we was we we pretty much kicked it every time we was on the road. We went out as a unit. We had that brotherhood. We could we could we could we could cuss each other out on the court and not and not take it personal. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we this how it is, nigga. You bullshit. You, <laughs> yeah. you can't tell a teammate yeah. that night. I, I, I want to go. I want. Uh, can you trade me? You right. You right. He yelled at me. He yelled at me. I don't like that. Like, yep. come on, man, pull your panties down. Like, you go, you man. We grown men. Yeah. We go get, I done got cussed out, and I done cussed motherfuckers out too. You know what I <laughs> mean? But that's yeah, what man. it is when you're trying to win. You, can you imagine how many motherfuckers Kobe cu cussed out? Yeah. <laughs> imagine. We 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 in the the NBA is becoming who can play with each other now. Like, come on, man, nigga, you who, just hoop. We ain't had no we we ain't had no jealousy. You you got millions. He, he got millions. He got millions. He got millions. He can go get the same shit. You can go get. We do the same shit. Jealousy. I don't know why any of that shit would creep up in, in some basketball. You gonna have motherfuckers better than you. You gonna have motherfuckers not better than you. That's just what it is. It's the league. Yeah. You gotta just hoop. The best and all the rest work. of that shit take care of itself. We ain't had no egos on our squad. We ain't, we ain't give a fuck. I ain't care if BD hit 30 every night. I want BD to do good. Right. Right. <laughs> if BD do good, I do good. We do good. <laughs> we try to get that trophy. All that personal. And, man, I can't play with him, man. He shoot too many minutes. So, man, look. Get a rebound. Put that motherfucker back in if you, can't, yep. if you think he shoot too much. Yep. There's so much other shit you can be doing. Like, it's crazy. Hey, honestly, I, I I love that one too. When you, when you said you know there's other things that people basketball players can do. Not everyone's gonna be scoring 30, 30 every night. No, not you're not. Score Forty, you know what I'm saying? Like Reggie Evans, we know Reggie Evans in, in itself, the man man is getting in the league for ten plus years because he averaged ten rebounds a game, nine rebounds a game. Amir Johnson, you know same thing too. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucking so, rebound, that's your opportunity to get thirty. You can get every rebound and get every put back. You can get thirty. Yeah, you got yeah. to work for that motherfucking get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You, you can get there's other ways to get thirty. You get a rebound, get a steal. Like you, you know what I mean? You got to play defense. Man, I, I love give it. a fuck about points as long as we get the W. I love it. I love it. I love it. We all getting playoff bonus money. Come on, this is this what the goal is. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I'm glad you brought playoffs up because in 2000 you you guys got to play against AI and the Sixers. You know who eventually oh, went man, to the the, oh, the Eastern man. Conference Finals. I, I know I know I know that might not, that might be a hard series to talk about because you know it's a long one. But talk about that series in itself and what was AI like, man? Man, listen, man. Just just one of the greatest scores I've ever seen. Damn. In the tough in the in that environment we was playing in. You know how much Aaron and Iverson were averaging this? Oh my Boy, God. it's not even a <laughs> yeah, you can't touch Iverson. What? We you we gotta be able to put a hand on this little fast motherfucker, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's and that's why I don't compare. That's why I can't put James, I can't put LeBron in that era because when you came in, we the defense wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. That rough shit, no, nah, no, nah, it was, it's, it's, you, you could, you, you just playing bully ball. And motherfuckers scared to foul you. We had a no dunk rule. You not dunking. You getting fouled hard on the ground. Damn. And you going to get up and you ain't going to do nothing because I got this dude, <laughs> I got these gorillas around me. Derek Colbert, Anthony Mason, you ain't finna do nothing. And just so everybody remembers, Anthony Three Mason. Was, you ain't finna do shit to nobody. And just so everybody remembers, Anthony Mason was part of the bad boys too. So that motherfucker knows everything, every little trick, every little dirty play that there, there is. Gorilla strong. Gorilla strong. <laughs> what, who, 
what, what, what was the game plan, you know, for Allen Iverson in itself? Because obviously, like you said, he's one of the greatest scorers ever. And when he played against Toronto, you know, I'm a diehard Raptors fan. I got to, I got to see, I, I didn't, I didn't appreciate because obviously I wasn't old enough, but I got to see the Vince Carter, you know, Allen Iverson rivalry in, in mm -hmm. that seven game series. What was the game plan going into that series? I mean, man, you just pray. <laughs> <laughs> That's that man. Pray to God. That <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> there's no, hey, listen, man, you, you look, man, there's no, there's, you know, it, it just, and this is going to put in, in the perspective of how fucking great he was. He played in the hand checking rules, man, where you can actually hit him. Boom, you can hit him, and it didn't even matter. Damn. And he's still killing. That's in the war, when it was, when it was, when it was war out there, bro. You saw how Allen Iverson was on the ground; they was fucking him up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that just that just added fuel to his fight. <laughs> so, so what you're so what you're saying? It didn't, it didn't matter what you threw at him, double team, triple team. It didn't matter. He was still scoring 30, 40. It didn't matter, man. He 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 was just you couldn't trap him. He's too fast. Damn. And then that team, that team, that team, and then you're going to you're going to begin to that team. Eric Snow, mm -hmm. Aaron McKee, Theo. These are role players. They know AI finna shoot that bitch fifty times, but, I, but you still got to do what you do. You still got to do what you do. So I think at the end of the day, when you when you going up against a motherfucker, you know you can't do nothing with. You got to try to x out everybody else around him that helps helps the team win, right? So. Aaron McKee, you can't let him get those threes. You know what I'm saying? Don't you can't you can't let Eric Snow yep. turn you over. Yep. Snow had that D. Yep. I mean, you can put that. your head on it. You know what I mean? So it, Theo Ratliff was he? You know what I mean? Offensively, he was he was nice. Defensively, he he, he you know what I mean? You gonna think twice about going in there sometime. You know what I mean? But it was just the core of that team, and they and they knew they you know that that nucleus they they knew what their role was. For sure. They know what no what nobody can do too much. They even had Samuel Dellenberry on the team too to block all shots if anybody came yeah, down just the paint. Athletes, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean a lot of people George Lynch, look. George Lynch too was a hell yep. of a fucking defender. So they had, you know what I mean? Duke, Eric Snow. <laughs> people, what, what, Lynch, what, people, what, what, but Key got locks too. Don't sleep. But Key what, got locks too now. What people also don't don't remember is that Raja Bell and Matt Barnes were on that team too. If they yeah. got unleashed and let go. They Shit, got a lot of. They got a, They had a lot of defensive-minded guys. They did, and that's, that's rare. Thing. That's rare when you don't have a great team. Yep. They won yep. games because of their defensive effort. Look at that. Look at all the fucking defenders they put around that offensive player. They got yep. guys that can score the ball, but shit, that them defenders. Yep. Roger Bell, George, George Lynch, Ratliff, Eric Snow, <laughs> Aaron McKee. You know what I mean. <laughs> Dollenberg, he was athletic. He was tall, but he was athletic. They For definitely sure. knew him so well. So now, yeah, that, yeah, we head over to Chicago in 01, right? But before we get into the playing career, please explain the 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 exact. Please explain the the band headbands. Was that because of you? Or explain <laughs> that concept because I'm 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 confused and I see by your reaction already. Please explain that concept. Man, this is so. <laughs> Arson was a I gotta hear this I get to Chicago right you know the headband shit was cool at first if you pay attention to how the season went and when certain things transpired certain transactions was made certain people was put in certain places now shit is changing right so John Paxson started off radio guy fucking with everybody Eddie Curry in our shoot around we just, 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 just being, just being one of the guys, right? So, he gets that fucking general manager job. Now all this shit changes. Everything's changed. We can't, we ain't doing this. We ain't doing that. He traded everybody. Think about it. When John Paxson came, he traded everybody away. Mm -hmm. And it just got to a point where me and his, me and him fell out over basketball shit. Because I feel we're the youngest team in the NBA. We shouldn't be running no fucking triangle. Don't know. We don't even want to run it. We don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Not interested. I didn't come here yet. I didn't come here to do that. I didn't come here to play in a pre premeditated offense with some teenagers. Yeah, you're right. Eddie Curry just turned 17, 18. <laughs> Damn. Tyson Chandler just turned 18. It was our top two draft picks my first year there. Damn. 
Shit. You you want to run a premeditated offense with some teenagers? These ain't no grown men yet. Right. It's a grown man league. You better teach the you better teach them the game. They gotta know some the ropes. Post first, moves. Yeah. Some post moves, some we, we need to just be playing regular basketball, pick and roll. Let we gotta teach the young, you know what I mean? If we're gonna lose every fucking game, let it be because we're developing. Mm-hmm. Not because we're not interested in this fucking offense that don't nobody want to run. Mm-hmm. We're twenty. We 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 were the youngest team in the league. We let's let's get the ball and let's go. You got me. You got Jamal Crawford. You got Jay Will, Kirk Hyatt, Tyson, Eddie. We, we got athletes. We should be running gun up and down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just running I mean, plays, you know what I'm saying? Especially, yeah. especially with you too, because all they really have to do, you you guys could have been the first Lob City if you think about it. Man, they wouldn't let they didn't they 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 wanted, and I'm gonna tell mm-hmm. you. And then as I sat back and I thought about it, you know, after the years passed by, years passed by, just me watching basketball, and 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 I got to thinking, I was like, why the fuck they never developed them young boys? Because they wanted to, they never they never wanted to change mm-hmm. from running a triangle. It was that shit was over like that that shit over. We ain't, MJ ain't coming in this motherfucker no more. <laughs> Pippen ain't coming in. Pip, well, Pip was playing with us for a minute, mm-hmm. but just the whole core. That, that's that whole Bulls core. Like, nah, like they was just stuck in that era and didn't, and didn't want to see it go. You know what I mean? So it got to a point where now Paxson, now Paxson, Paxson is all in my personal, all in my personal space now. Showing up in my house and shit. I'm like, first of all, how the fuck he know where I live at? <laughs> And I'll give you a funny ass story about that. Like I was I was sitting at the crib one day, right? Doing my thing, blowing like I do, because I don't do shit else. <laughs> I sit at the crib with blow, boom, chill, right? So I had some company over. I had some female company over, right? So I was I had got in the shower. So I'm getting out the shower. She was like, um, she was like, um, your lawn guy just came by. I'm like, my what? She was like, your lawn service dude. I'm like, I don't have a fucking lawn, ser- lawn service dude. Like, what are you talking about? I have a lawn service guy. What are you talking about? Who was that at the door? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I heard the doorbell when I was getting out the shower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So That's crazy. she goes yeah. upstairs talking about some, oh, that was your lawn person. So I go look out the window. I don't got no fucking lawn person there. What are you talking about? I right. look, John Paxson. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell he doing over there? What the hell he doing over there? Like what? And then it was just, it was just, you know, he got me in his office every day, said, why am I saying this? Why am I saying that? I said, look, John Paxson, first of all, let me tell you, you know me, like where I come from, I I, I was raised differently. If somebody asks me a question, I'm gonna answer. I'm not gonna be thinking about, okay, what would John Paxson say? Right. Uh, is this right? Like, how should I answer this? No, so I answered this, this shit the, like I'm answering it. Mr. Robinson, what do you think about the triangle, man? We shouldn't be running this shit. I ain't come here to run this. <laughs> and, then he, and then he got me he got me in his office, right? With the with the high with, with my quotes, with my quotes highlighted, like I'm gonna come in there and lie about what I said. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I said. Why would I lie <laughs> for you? You got it hi- highlighted right there in front of you. Right. Paxton, right. what are we doing? You you got me here every day talking. You just owe me every day, every day about what I'm saying to the media. It's basketball shit. We shouldn't be doing it. So, so let, me, let me let me let me ask you one question. If if Phil was there, would you still would you still think the same way, or because it was Paxton? I, I Phil probably wouldn't have ran that shit with us. True. True. If Phil is, you know what I mean, the genius that he is, he'd have been like, nah, we ain't that type of team. He wouldn't even took the job. <laughs> you right. You right. probably wouldn't even took right. the job. Like what? Run the triangle with my office with two teenagers. <laughs> e Rob and you got and then Charles Oakley and Antonio Davis and Kendall Gill. <laughs> <laughs> no, we not ready that shit. You know what I mean? So it just got to a point where he started fucking with me, just just trying to fuck with me, like banning the headbands, banning. Band and dress code. I still wore what the fuck. I, I still wore what the fuck I wanted to wear. I still wore headbands because Paxton. Here's here's the thing, John. You you you're making a quick judgment. You think you're hurting me? You're not hurting me. Mm. I want you to come out of this tunnel with me when I don't have a headband on. I want you to tell that fucking kid right there who I usually give it to after every game. Tell him why I don't got no headband on. I want you to follow me. 
hey, I don't have a headband on. He's finna tell you why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This shit ain't about me and no fucking headband. This shit is about what we throw and give away to kids after games. Yeah. This is why we wear all this shit, man. Armbands, headbands, and wristbands. We get this shit away to kids. Yeah. You know how fucking happy a kid be to get that fucking headband? Man, That's man. what you took away. You ain't hurt me. <laughs> you, but you don't see the big picture. You don't see you don't even know what's going on. You mm-hmm. don't even know. I I, I have I have fans. Who is who is expecting headbands and gear from me like they've been expecting before you got hired? Mm-hmm. Now you got hired, you want to take all that shit away? You're not thinking. Most definitely, most definitely. You know what I mean? So that that's what that was about. It was about him being a hater. How you go hate? How you go stop us from wearing Mitchell and Ness jersey when this is this is this is the part of the NBA? Yeah, the Ness, that's, that's a good throw, point. The throwback era. This represents our game. What the fuck are you doing? Yep. Yep. No, no jerseys, no, no headbands. Like what? Like what? Like, like first of all, I'm gonna do what I want to do th- yep. because I was raised that way. Nobody ever tell me what to do. First of all, you, you must have forgot how I was raised. Like, nobody tell me what I had to do. Do no. So for me to be where I'm at, and now I got to start listening to a motherfucker like that. And then sh- guess what? In Charlotte, you know what Coach Silas said? I don't give a fuck what you wearing. Mm-hmm. Seven thirty. Say less. Say less. So it's different strokes. It's every every organization ain't like that. You know, we're, we're, we're transitioning we're, from no. basketball to golf. Huh? It doesn't make any sense. What'd you say? I said, how do you transition from basketball to golf? It doesn't make any sense to me. I think I think I think Mike was hanging with the billionaires. That's what, that's what they do. <laughs> they, that's what Probably. they do. You see, they try to shit on Mike. They try to make it seem like Mike had a gambling problem. No, y'all got a problem with what Mike. Yeah. Y'all get out his life. Yep. Who yep. cares? Now y'all look y'all in his pockets. <laughs> God damn. Get out of my pocket. We're, we're, if, I we're, go, we're, if I were to go gamble a million, I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, def- we're, we're definitely gonna touch up on Jerry Curls in a little bit. But since you brought this up, this is this is actually a big thing that's happening right now in, in the NBA. You know, uh, when when you know throughout the, the five years you were in the NBA, David Stern had a had a uh, a rule. You had to wear suits and this and that, couldn't wear jewelry because Allen Iverson came in and changed that whole game, you know, just, just based on that. Talk to us about now Adam Silver coming in and, and being like, you know what? Fuck all that. We don't. I don't care what you guys wear anymore. Just make sure you guys. You know, you see Russell Westbrook. You see. You see the, that that guy's a whole no, different no. ball game. But these they have a whole. Dressed, they, these niggas dressing different now. I don't know different what these ways. Do. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so let, 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 I, 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 this shit. These niggas. Nigga, D Wade, LeBron. You niggas flood, man. Where I come from, you flood, bro. Like definitely. you look stupid, my nigga. Like come on, man. Like. Oh, <laughs> but I, 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 I just want to know how. What do you think about you Adam? Got, so, you should be fining them for that shit. Them niggas should be fined for wearing that shit. You. Flooding, bro. I see your calves, bro, and your knees is covered. What do you think about how about, about Adam Silver is coming now and allowed people to be open about what they're wearing? That's crazy. Bro, bro, you saw how LeBron, LeBron got two boys like puppets. Bron, Bron. I ain't wearing that shit, cuz. Like, come on, cut, Bron. I ain't wearing that shit. I'm gonna be the LeBron to be like, man, he robbed me with this team because I don't want to wear that. That's how Hold LeBron on, to be coming at me because I ain't wearing that shit, man. Come on, man. Hold on, Steven. Hold on, Steven. Who's the worst dressed in the NBA? Just pick any one of them. <laughs> <laughs> they all on the same fucking terrible level. <laughs> put, put fucking Serge Ibaka there with that dumbass scarf. <laughs> that motherfucker, Russell. Oh, he he takes the cake, though. Russell. Yeah, that's who I thought. That's who I thought. Russell, <laughs> he's on a different level. I love him, oh, but... <laughs> God oh, damn! God. I want I, 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 I want to I get back to Chicago for once for one last question. You know, related to Chicago Bulls, but I just want to know when Scottie Pippen got there in '94, I think it was in '93. He came in halfway through the season. You know, obviously they're having a big a big uh, outro for him, kind of like his, the the retirement party, I guess you could say for him. What was it like being his teammate, and what did he bring to that team? I mean, I think Pippen, I think, I think at first, because like, I think he was just, I think the Bulls, I think the Bulls owed him like five million or some shit, right? Mm-hmm. So I think they put him, they they had him around so he can, I don't know what his situation was. Like, I, I don't know what he was doing, but you know, he was practicing, like he was around. And I think he just got, he just got to a point where he was like, man, shit, I, I think I want to hoop again. You know what I'm saying? Just for, just from being around us, fucking with us, right? So I guess he got motivated and then. He ended up playing with us, man, and that was that was crazy. Like I was like, I can't believe this shit. Like I'm playing with Scottie Pippen, 
Right. This is this is the man who they used to call me in college. Because mm -hmm. I, I played at D2. We, we played at Central Arkansas where he played at. They got a big ass. He at the top of the he at the top of the um the stadium like this, arms out in the rafters, right? In Central Arkansas. I look, God damn, Pippin, damn, Pippin went here. This is crazy. I gotta put up 50 in this motherfucker. Pippin went here, you know what I mean? <laughs> so just to just to just to hang out with him, man, and <laughs> yeah, Pip, Pip was cool, man. Did, did 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 he teach you anything? Does any any anything you you could take from him? Does work ethic, the way that he spent his money, does anything in general? You know, about I had general? already I had I had already learned that. Can't nobody tell me what to do about no money. I've been having money before I got to the league, so ain't nobody okay. need to tell me that. So you know, they, you. they don't even be on that. They just be more of just like, you know what it be? It be more of like they be more of like plugging you in with shit, like connections to certain shit, right? So that mm -hmm. that'd be kind of like what the veteran should be about. For sure, for sure. You know Fair I mean? enough. You gotta, Fair you enough. gotta watch it. I mean, they ain't finna teach. Them niggas ain't finna tell you like how to play defense and, and do that. If you don't watch and learn, then you just don't learn. Most definitely. And, you, and, you. and that's when I, and, and and me coming up, missing out on them, them, them high school years, and and them, you know what I'm saying? Not not learning the, not knowing the, the basketball language, a closeout, drop step. I didn't know none. I didn't know none of that terminology. You know what I mean? But I had to. I watched and I learned, motherfuckers, and I and I added it and I learned it that way and shit. And, that, and that's what it was. I, mm -hmm. I learned by watching. Hey, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like you I, gotta I, watch. Like like if it's a month. Like and I tell these young kids. I tell these kids now. Nah, if you ain't playing the minutes you're supposed to be playing, and there's a guy that's playing the minutes that you think they ain't should be playing, what what are they doing in practice? Yeah. Yeah. And what are you doing in practice to where you feel you need to be there? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got a, I got a kid that out that I trained. <clears throat> Ashton, he goes to, he goes to DHS. You know the the, the champions, the, the, the <laughs> champions, right? So he he go there, right? And he was ready to, you know what I mean? Be like, man, look, I think I'm finna. I said, nah. I said, if you quit, I said, if you quit, if you quit, you gonna be a quitter in life. This shit ain't just basketball, like you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I had a coach tell me. Your game represents the type of person you're gonna be. <laughs> yeah, sure. I love and, that. And this is after I had four 40 point games, and then that fifth game I had 55 with seven minutes left, and he told me that shit because I was fucking Damn. mad because I, I was mad he took me out the game. I'm trying to score 100. <laughs> he took me out. He said, "Your game, your game is gonna reflect the type of person you're gonna be. You're done for the night." Let, You've created you've created opportunity for for the for the players that usually don't play to out, to actually have an opportunity to get in the game. I yeah, never looked at that shit like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The motherfuckers who don't get in the game that they, they they doing the same shit we doing, bumping, grinding, hurting, all of that, right? So, word. You know, he was like, "You shouldn't be mad. You created opportunity for them guys to get in the game. Watch how fucking happy they're gonna be to actually get in the game when they never usually do." For you sure. know what I'm saying? I never thought like that. I'm like, man, no, nah, I, I, nah, what you taking me out for? Shit, I'm about to get a hundred. No, nah, no, nah, you've created an opportunity for your teammates. Well, definitely. Who, who, who was your your favorite NBA teammate? Probably Derrick Coleman. Derrick Coleman. Two, I got two. Derrick Coleman, Anthony Mason. Damn. So them, back them, from Charlotte. Them, 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 them the two guys I hung out with the most. Mm -hmm. Chris, you know, I call Derrick Coleman, Chris Style Coleman. This motherfucker got a refrigerator just for Chris Style. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Style Coleman, you know, I pull up and I come to the crib, man. Open the fridge, like, you know, what? Oh, I need to get, grab about four or five of these. These coming with me. <laughs> he ain't going to say shit, man. Go ahead. Well, Whatever. <laughs> that's family right there. That's family right there. Just, just from him being from Detroit, you know what I mean? No, no, he know what I've been through trying to get up out of them streets and uh, you know in Michigan, you know what I mean. So we had that connection and shit. So and, and Anthony Mason, it, it was if I ain't not, if I ain't with DC, me and me and Anthony Mason in the streets. Most definitely, yeah. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm surprised Charles Oakley wasn't in there. But your no, experience, I, your experience Oakley, wasn't the Oakley, same as those guys. Oakley, Oakley shitted on me this summer in the, in the big three. I don't fuck with Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real. I don't fuck with Oak like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh. Fair enough. You gonna bitch a nigga in the summertime? What the fuck you on? Damn, oh, give free up my guy. Free oh, up my oh, guy. You no, know, oak, oak, oak. But that's oak. That's how. That's that's how oak is is relevant. That's his relevancy. Right. Controversy. 
Okay. You're not a big, you're not a fucking legend to be out here coaching. I let them know that shit. Like, oh, you go, you go play me like that. You about to hear my, you about to hear it from me, and you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna do nothing other than that. Because mm-hmm. where I come from, you ain't finna do nothing. Come on, man, yeah. we ain't playing that game. All that scary technology. Nah, can't you know, get off like that. that. No, I feel like <laughs> can't get off like that. You got, you got the mother cats scared of you and all that. No, nah, I, I, no. Nah, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, but oh, no, nah, fuck with oh. I want to transition now to how the hell you got to Canada. <laughs> how you got to Canada? Oh, I'm, hoop- Come on, man. I'm a hooper. Listen, man. No, I, 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 we, we, we oh. know you. We, we know you played at Hall- uh, for Halifax, but of all places to go, you came to Canada. That's what it was. That's what that's that was my. Hey, I got the opportunity. I'm going to hoop. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. That's what it was. I played the D League. I played in the D League. I played in the ABA. I played. Yeah. Yeah. I will hoop <laughs> shit. I, I, that's what I would, man. Listen, I'll go play anywhere. Well, definitely. But that, that 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 actually got you to where you are now. You know, you play for Halifax, but you uh Nova Scotia is not too far from Halifax. I'm not I'm not too too certain of that. But yeah, I'm uh, in, you, yeah. you, I'm you, in you, Dartmouth. You, pardon? I'm in Dartmouth. So now you're now, now you're coaching, you know, you're coaching one of uh top school. What was it like transitioning from you know being a player to now being a coach? And on top of that, what was some of the the adversity you had to face as a coach? What's some things you had to put aside, you know, to become a coach? What's crazy is like, <clears throat> I think what's crazy and what made me realize is when I got into coaching, it made it made me go back to all the conversations my coaches used to have with me when they tried to get me to play hard. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. The potential, mm-hmm. right? But you know, I didn't I didn't understand that. I'm like, I got forty. 12 rebounds. <laughs> what you talking about? You know yeah. what I mean? So it was it was it was just them trying to push me to get to get me to give my all every game, night in and night out. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's the part I see with my kids. You see that potential, you'd be like, man, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. You know what I'm saying? So I find myself doing that with my kids because they got the potential, right? Mm-hmm. But they ain't they ain't, they don't have I'm like look. You got you got to play you got to play this game like it's your last. It's 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 the small things that they they don't continue to do. Okay, if you help, you think you're done. You ain't done. <laughs> Y'all this, game, this game takes your mind, body, and your soul. You you're never still. Mm-hmm. You're either scrambling on defense. You're even you you even you're doing something. If you're standing still, you should be sitting down. Mm-hmm. Like that's my thing. That's what I'm trying. Like just because you're not involved, in the play is not for you. You're a part of the play. You're doing something to make sure the play is successful. May not be for you, you know. And that's that. You know what I'm saying? So, just just getting them to play all out at the right, just like all the time, just that continuous effort, right? Mm-hmm. So so do, when time like that happens, you ever go back to the, you know show those guys. Hey man, listen. You know what you what your role was when you were in the NBA to show everybody on the team. Hey, maybe you might be the leading scorer. You might be the, the our best rebounder, by best shot blocker, whatever case might be. Do you ever assign roles for your for your players, or you just kind of say you, you you give that to them throughout the year? I mean, this is this is my <clears throat> this is my first year with them, right? This is my first year coaching, right? So okay. A few of them I trained. I was already training, so I pretty much knew their game, right? So. Out here in high school, you know, they, they trap a lot. They trap a lot, right? So 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 you really can't focus too much on plays, running plays, or, you know what I mean? Because they, they trap everything. Like, as soon as you get across half court, you come two players. You come, so my thing is ball, just taking care of the ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take care of the ball, make a free throw. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. We played we play DHS, which is the return. Of, they won the championship last year. We played them our first home game. We lost by 26, right? Okay. But what I pointed out to them, I said, this game is about possessions, right? Basketball is a numbers game. Okay, listen, I'm, and I'm about to break this down to y'all. And, it, and this is because I'm, I'm breaking it down how my coaches broke it down to me, right? We lost by 26, right? Okay, how? 25 turnovers. 25 turnovers led to 28 points. Mm-hmm. We cut that halfway down. We win the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we missed 12 free throws. We was 15 for 27 from the free throw line. We were out rebounded 25 to 9. Yeah. We cut down on turnovers. We win the game. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and so that that's that's kind of how you 
keep them up here, you know what I'm saying, and let them know, like, there's winning and losing. There's winning and losing. If we yeah. cut this down, we win. Yeah. That's a great point. <laughs> yep, you know what I'm saying? Point. You can't be down because, oh, man, we lost by 26. But look, we were in the game the whole game, all the way up until the fourth quarter. We were down 10. But guess what? Y'all, from 25 turnovers, most of those happened in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You can't start the quarter off turning the ball over and you're down 10. Yeah. Now those turnovers, boom, you're down 20. Next, you know, you're down 30, 40, down back, you know, 26, now, now, crawling back. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, we only got 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Now, yes. You know what I'm saying? We get, we, and we're turning it over. So I, I tell the guy, you know what I'm saying? And and my thing is I always try to prepare myself before I get into anything, right? So I've coached a lot of these high school kids, right? I've been – I go support them. I go to their games. So I, I, I'm one. I'm one to get into coaching. So obviously, I got to see what the I got to see what the playing field is. What is this team doing? How are they playing? So <laughs> I already knew. I already knew what we were in for. Well, definitely. I told them. I said, "What did I tell y'all? If you don't, yeah. how did this team win? They're not good in the half court offense because all they want to do is drive, 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 and turn you over. Only way they can beat you is if they turn you over, and that's how they beat y'all. Mm-hmm. Twenty five turnovers." 28 points. You lost by 26. You cut half of those turnovers down, we win the game. We missed nine free throws. We missed nine free throws. Instead of being down nine and a half, we would have been up nine. We would have been plus nine if we made our free throws. Yep, yep. <laughs> and one, you know, one numbers game, that, that, and that's how I learned the game, so that's how I got to teach it. And one thing that it's you – that keep them up, right? Most definitely. One thing you touched up on as well is, is you said that you like to be prepared for every single game. Talk to our viewers. Like I said earlier, we have a lot of kids that watch this and stuff. Talk to the viewers about just watching film, you know, even on yourself, on other teams, being really prepared for that mentally to know what's coming your way and, and obviously do it. Yeah, but see, this is, this is, this is what we as basketball players got to start understanding at a young age like right now and start doing. We can't just watch the game no more just to be watching the game. Mm-hmm. You got to really watch the game. How did he mm-hmm. get open? Study it, yeah. What did he do? Why is Kyrie so fucking great getting to the basket? What is he doing? Mm-hmm. Right? You got to study these players. So, so that's why when I faced the Kobe's and the Iversons, I already knew. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Oh, yeah, I'm watching, but I'm, but I'm really watching. Because yeah. now I'm in the NBA. I ain't just watching these games no more. Now I'm watching, but no, I'm, I'm scouting too. Kobe, that motherfucker, oh, he want to be right there. <laughs> like the ball right there. That motherfucker don't miss him right there. I got to force him off of that spot. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you you know what I'm saying? Right. You're, you're doing your own personal, you know, analyzation of what this, what's going to happen the next night on right. top of everything that the team is going to prepare for you to, to be successful, right? But you got to sure. do some of your own digging, your own, your own research on Kobe. I watch Kobe. Yeah, I love Kobe. I know his game, too, because I'm watching. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, so we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get, we gotta get them to where they, they, they thinking like, man, it's more than a game. It's other stuff you can be doing. Yeah, you yeah. might not hit thirty. How many rebounds you have? How many deflections you had? That team had twenty eight deflections. We had five. So that means they deflected the ball twenty eight times. May have caused a turnover. It may have went out of bounds, but it fucked up what we was doing. Yeah. Them deflect deflections are big. It don't show up on the stat sheet. It's not gonna say deflections. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They 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 tore the, they 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 tore to the go towards what they see on paper. Oh, I had this. I had you. the little shit. Yeah, that reminds me. That, that reminds me of Coach Carter when Worm went up to him and was like, "Coach, read out my numbers." He's like, "You had a uh, five and four. He's like, "No, nah, sir, I had twelve and eight. He's like, "No, you had five uh five turnovers and four missed free throws or some shit like that." And he's like, "Oh." Yeah. Same same thing there. Same thing yeah, there. Same yeah. concept there. Same concept there. We 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 know already that you don't that you don't like the triangle offense. We know that's definitely something you don't you don't you don't in the, in your Chicago days wasn't working for you. So I'm sure you don't do that with your team now. What is your play style like now? Like I like mean, in, we, in, ter- in terms of in terms of your, like your team right now coaching. I mean ba- I mean I did it. I mean I just try to build it based on what we got right. So we got so we play we play posi- we play positionless basketball. <laughs> You don't have a position. You're not a one, you're not a two, you're not a three, and you're not a four. We got five players five to out. fill five spots. Right. Right. <laughs> right? And you and we and we got and we run, we, you know, we run the backdoor plays, we run the uh 
you got the we run thumb up. Just I mean, you're not gonna have a lot of plays because because the game is, is so quick. They're different now. <laughs> trapping a lot, right? So we want to get the ball and go because our team is is set up to where we're we can get the rebound and whoever got it can ha got they can handle the ball. So I got five ball handlers. I got probably out of those five ball handlers, three of them are three point shooters, right? So we want to keep the floor spread. Two in the yep. corner, one up top, two at the elbow. Same offense we ran in Charlotte. You got them. Go you 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 got that Golden State Warriors team. Cut off the yeah, we run it. Yeah, we run the NBA <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hey, that's good practice. And they're only going to yeah. set up the next level. Yeah, and see, and see, I want to get to a point where we got to like, we got to change like, like, like because like I had one of my kids set a screen in a row, which I'm just, you set a screen like this. Boom, you set a screen mm -hmm. right. She called it, boop, illegal pick. I mean, just little shit like that, that like, that's not, that's not making our kids better when they go face a team that's going to hit his ass like that. Boop, you know what I mean? Then he go, first thing he's going to be doing. <laughs> I thought we couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you, you got, yeah. we got to be able to play the game, like, real game. Like, like, like it's crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just little things like that just to get the kids prepared for, you know what I'm saying? What they well, go definitely. in the face. Well, definitely. I, I want to ask you one more question related to your, your coaching, then we're going to get into a little game after that. But what's some of the, the, the hardest things that you have to, you know, adapt to as a coach and just in terms of the kids in general? Like, you know, you, you deal with different parents on a regular basis. Oh, man. That's, uh, <laughs> we, we, deal, we deal with the parents as well. What's some of the, the adversity and some of the, 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 the unnecessary comments that come along with being a coach? I'm going I'm 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 to tell you a situation I had with a kid, right? <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> this kid, this kid wanted to leave a team practice one hour early to go personal train. What? <laughs> like go weightlift? Personal no. train type? Personal train, like with his with his trainer, <laughs> shoot the coach or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I was like, what? I'm like, and then and then so and so and so his mom, right? His mom, his mom had um emailed me and she was like, you know, because I had told him, I was like, no, I said, because in my one of my rules was you cannot miss practice unless it's medical. Okay. You got hit by a school bus, you got your head blown off, you you got shot. You, 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 only time you should be able to miss a practice. If it ain't for that, then you gotta be here. You gotta be accountable, right? I never missed a practice. Right? So it's just things like that. And it was like, so I was, I emailed her in a way, making it seem like that trainer should be wrong for trying to get a kid out of practice to come train with him. But she was like, oh no, no, you didn't come at him like that. This is what I want my son to do. And my son's going to do what I tell him to do. And nobody's going to, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's not what I, you know what I'm saying? It was like, I didn't stop the kid because you know what I'm saying? I let him go. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I, I, I'm in the city. This is my first time. I, I wasn't expecting that, but I'm I'm living and I'm learning. So right. for next year, I'm laying the fucking law down. Yep. You, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. So I, I'm coming in now, not knowing the, not knowing that part of the game to where like the parents is really running the shit. Because the coach y'all had last year, y'all y'all ran him over. Yep. I gotta say this two or three times for y'all to get up and move. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's like you know what I mean. So I was like, oh, okay, okay, I see, I see what I'm dealing with. So it's just, it's just that next year she, she gonna be red, totally different. Like I, I, like listen to this. We had a game on a Monday. Our last practice was that Friday. Our first game was that Monday. We had a practice Friday. I had three fucking kids at practice. Our first game is is Monday. <laughs> like and, and it's like the parents. Oh, if you ain't doing in school, if you ain't doing well in school, you ain't going to practice. I got those type of parents. They punish the kids with you missing practice. Oh, but not God. smart enough to realize, well, why my son ain't playing? What? What do you, oh, so you don't understand why your son ain't playing? He ain't been here. <laughs> he don't know shit. I'm going to put him in the game. He don't know shit. <laughs> Real. That's like, giving, that's like giving somebody a gun who never shot a gun before. They're going to be like, man, what? Uh, I supposed to do with this? Yeah, that's like me putting you in. The, you don't know yeah. shit. You can't be a student if you ain't in the classroom. 
and it's and it's, it's, it's crazy because because this 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 is some some stuff that you know Devonte and myself experienced. But like a former NBA player, we would think that you know they would be sponges. They'd be like, "Yo, I, I get I get Eddie Robinson as my coach, and I'm gonna miss practice to go train with somebody else." Meanwhile, I'm dealt I'm doubtful that other trainer was even an NBA guy before. But my coach, the NBA guy, I still want to miss practice, yeah, and I have the blows my mind, man. And I have the nerve to even call him afterwards and say, "Yo, why is my son not playing? Who the hell do I think I am?" <laughs> like that's crazy. That, that's crazy. Like you miss practice, you think you finna you, you your minutes ain't finna be like that. I got kids that never miss practice. They're starting just because of that. Right. They've been here every day. They he, they I got three players that never missed a day. Well, four. <laughs> he had one. He had one excuse with the with the, with the dentist, but other than that, I started them four. Damn. They the only ones that really know the shit. Right. In shape and ready to play. Y'all ain't been here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you, and, you, and, 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 and to be honest, you, your game ain't to where you think you can just be missing practice like that. You can come in here and just dominate. No, yo, you, yeah. nah, so you need to be here. You need to be learning. You need to be, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Most definitely. Okay. Most yeah. Practice is everything. This is, this determines your everything. Practice determines it. your everything. So what are you doing in practice to where coach is going to be like, hey, I can, count, I can count on you. Come on, come on. That's what it's about. I love it. I love you it. Ain't finna, you ain't finna be getting all these minutes. You don't miss school. You, 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 oh, so you didn't go to school today, but you in practice? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Love to you hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're a student athlete. Student first. Like, like, like I have to, like, I think next year I'm going to do my, my trials based on <laughs> academics. <laughs> so I can make sure I have 13 kids every practice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely. What these kids don't really? understand. What these really? kids don't understand is they're going to have to do the same thing when they go to college. It's not any different. You got to take <laughs> care of your, your academics, then it's athletics. It's the same thing. What you're teaching them now, they're going to have to do anyways. And I, and so. I tell them, and I never, and, and I ain't never once said, yo, when I was in and doing this, when I was doing, I don't even do that. I'm just telling you what they know I did that shit. This yep. is what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you already know. I ain't got to tell you what I did. You know that because I'm telling you. And I'm not going to tell you shit wrong. Yeah. It's we can't We can't give up. We can't give up rebounds when they're shooting free throws and they're getting rebounds. Yeah. You can't do that shit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know no other way to tell you, but like that. That's how I was told <laughs> to Like, if you think you're going to get some pampered, no. Nah, it wasn't given to me like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure, the game just like it was given to me, real and one hundred percent. Paul Silas, I yep. don't give a fuck about you looking at me like that. Stop some motherfucking body, but I'm gonna put you back in. Go on, sit down. That's real shit. Sure? Oh, I gotta lock a motherfucker up to be out here on this court. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. You don't get no realer than that. He told me what it was. <laughs> can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with the coach. That's real. Fucking body. Yeah, you hit five in a row. That motherfucker hit six in a row. Oh yeah, let me yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> That's real. You, know what I mean? you can't you can't That's you, real. you can argue with that. He told you what it was and why he yeah. set your ass down. For sure. He got For five sure. in a row, but he got five in a row too. For sure. For you sure. Stop yeah. the fucking body, like you know what I mean. And that's the mindset. Like these kids don't get it. They, 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 that's what I'm saying. That cloth, that cloth is different from where we come from. <laughs> it's fucking life and death. That, that's what they don't understand. Yeah. Every generation is make it, worse. Like, I got to make it. This is what you don't understand. I had to make it, so I'm not fucking around. <laughs> I'm not fucking around. Like, I got to make it. I'm not going back to the fucking streets of Flint, Michigan. I, I, no, I'm not making it. No, no, I got to make it. I hear so that. that. You just gotta have that mentality of shit. I, I gotta eat every day, on the court. I gotta pick it up. I gotta learn this. Like you gotta, you gotta soak it up, and then when it's game time, shit, go apply it. Right. Sure. That's great, sure. man. No, that's great. You know that segment alone, Stephen. We can use that and just show the kids, man. And they need to hear that, especially from somebody. That water down and being nice. No, nah, that shit ain't gonna get you nowhere. Yep, you got to sure. do a real, raw, and uncut. Yep, yeah. love it. At the <laughs> next it. level, that's the at the next that's level, it's going to be the same thing. That's how I got it, and that's how I took it, and that shit made me realize, okay, well, shit, Damn, your game don't mean that. It's, it's going to be other motherfuckers that can hoop, too. You ain't the only nigga that got game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? You know how many motherfucking kids want to try to walk through them doors every day? Yeah. 
For sure, for sure. You you better be ready. For sure. But, you know, and that, and that, and that, and in a perfect world, you know, we would definitely do things a lot differently. Speaking of a perfect world, we like to conclude this show with a game that we do called Perfect World. So I'm going to put you in a scenario here, and you're going to give me what you would do in a perfect okay. world, right? So in a perfect world, you're in the end of your season, uh, your senior year, sorry, you got every school in the country you could go to. What school are you going into in the NCAA? Mm -hmm. Who, I think I think if I would have went D1 back when I was, probably Cincinnati back when I was coming out. Wow. Huggins, he was on me tough. Wow. I just like the style of play. You know, Damn. up and down. Shit, that, that program, Cincinnati, Melvin Levitt, King Martin, you know all of you know all the dogs that came out of there. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lance. Cincinnati was high on my radar in Syracuse. It was my top two, Syracuse and, and Cincinnati. I could definitely attest to Cincinnati. I had a uh, opportunity to face them in college. Those guys are rough, man. Yeah, Those guys against, are rough. I played against Ruben Patterson and Juco. Damn, Damn crazy. And so now – That Jayhawk conference in, in, Canada, in uh, Kansas, that Jayhawk conference. Lee Nalen, Steven Jackson, hey, Sean Marion. Man, <laughs> we, had, we got them on. The list goes on. <laughs> the list goes on. So oh, now – That Jayhawk conference. For sure. And I went, to, I went to school in Missouri, so we used to face some Kansas some Kansas yeah. Jucos back in the day. They were rough, man. So now you, you do your thing at Cincinnati. You won and done, right? You're a superstar. You're a superstar in the NBA. Let's say now we get to free agency. You get to have uh, – and I'm going to take players of this era right now to not make things complicated in this perfect world. You get a chance now free agency to have one of these rookies on your team but also to sign, you have enough money to get a superstar in today's NBA. Who's the rookie you pick? Who's the NBA superstar that you pick to team up with? In a perfect world. Uh, right now, I like LaMelo Ball. Okay. LaMelo Ball, yeah. give me LaMelo Ball and give me KD. <laughs> Ooh! Give you KD. KD. Ooh, I like that one. KD, my dude. That's my dude right there. That motherfucker, man. Woo! I like how many that championships? One. How many championships are you winning with them? With them too? Yeah. We we ooh, we probably get a couple out of that. Fair to say. <laughs> Fair to say. Now let me ask you a question. That concludes that concludes the perfect world. But let me ask you a question. Can KD? I know we talking about this tic tac stuff. Can KD play in the era back then? Yeah. Can Lamelo? Well, no. that's not fair yet. No, that no, no, no. That's not fair yet. We'll leave that out. We'll leave that out. The question for it's now. Been, it might have been too rough for him. <laughs> <laughs> fair to say. Now, to conclude this, you know, I, I want to ask you. I kind of always ask something different, but give me five players in this era that you can that you do think would flourish, not only play but flourish in uh back then, the way they used to play back then and the officiate and all that, the whole nine. Five. That's a great players. question. That's a great question. I think Chris Paul. Oh, Chris Paul, for sure. Uh, let me see. Definitely James Hart. Okay. Really, really. Oh, definitely. Okay. Score. He's a score. Okay. He big. KD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. K. I said KD, right? Yep. Yeah. That's three. Uh. It's tough. It's tough. LeBron, it's tough. of course. Yeah. Ooh, let me see. Who the other one? We try to get a big. Yeah. So you 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 want to put Rondo in that one? But not. We talking about flourish. I don't know if Rondo flourish in that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Rondo couldn't shoot, right? True. He'd have been like Avery Johnson. <laughs> you gotta be a motherfucker that with that kid, man. Let me see. If you had to give a big, yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, uh, in the, the other, the other Laker, Anthony Davis. Oh, AD, AD. You know what? I won't even. I won't even argue with those five. I won't even argue with those five. I agree. I agree for sure. 
And the final question that we ask all of our guests, you know, we want to know who is someone that you would like to see on Talk Your Exposure. But here's the kicker, though. You have to help us get them. Well, here? On the show. We'll be good. Let me see. Jay will be good. Jay will. Okay. Okay. So remember, remember, remember you, you you guys get us connected with them. You know what I'm saying? Definitely would appreciate that. And and like Jay like Will's have... dude, Jay Will's my guy. My everybody hated them Dukies. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm 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 a I'm a Duke fan myself. So that would be great for me. That's to be able perfect to talk to. for this man right here. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why that name. Look, you see what I'm saying? That's why that name came out. That... It's crazy, right? Hey, everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that one. That's but I just right. want to say, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk to us today. You know, your story has oh, been yeah, very, yeah. very inspiring. I was locked in the whole time. It was, it was a great story. Let all of, our, all of our followers know where they could find you on social media. Well, I'm on social media, Twitter, E-Rob, 3232. Same for Twitter, same for uh, Instagram, same for Facebook. E Rob thirty two thirty two. Make sure y'all go give him a follow, and he'll he'll you know he'll like you guys up or whatever the case might be. Hit him up for, for some questions too. He he does respond. I'm telling you guys that much right now. He does respond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One thing, like like I said, one more time. You know, thank you so much for for taking some time to talk to us today. We wish you nothing but success down the line, nothing but greatness, and hopefully 2021 is a better year for all of us, and especially you, man. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, man. Whew, they, yeah, they need to get this <laughs> pandemic shit right. This year. <laughs> for sure. Most definitely, most definitely. On that note, you know, saying one more time thank you so much for the, for the time appreciate it man, man. all right